And with these tools together, we've now figured out our calorie deficit. Hey everyone, Kev the Trainer here. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing part three of my Apple Watch and my Fitness Pal series. I'm gonna be going over how I use my Fitness Pal and the Fitness App data for my Apple Watch to calculate a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. And I also have a special spreadsheet that you can download to make tracking even easier. A calorie deficit is what occurs when you burn more calories than you consume, and this in turn allows you to lose weight. When you pair my Fitness Pal and Apple Watch together and see your food and exercise calories, you're given this number that shows you your calories remaining. But that's not your calorie deficit. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually calculate it. And if you haven't seen the previous two parts of this series, where I go over how to use the MyFitnessPal app on your Apple Watch, or how to transfer your exercise calories from your Apple Watch onto the MyFitnessPal app on your phone, go ahead and check out those videos right over here. I will say as an update to part one, when it comes to using the MyFitnessPal app on the Apple Watch, there have been a lot of recent issues. A lot of people commented that they were unable to see certain metrics, and it was after I upgraded my Apple Watch from a Series 2 to a Series 6 that I started seeing those same problems as well. Calories and macros on the first nutrition screen weren't displaying, the add water button wouldn't work, and neither would the quick add button. But on the bright side, my nutrient progress bars were still working. MyFitnessPal is aware of the issue. On their website, they list these problems as one of the bugs they're working on but as of mid-January 2021, they don't have a solution for it just yet. So if you're watching this much later, hopefully they fixed it. But the good news is that having the MyFitnessPal app on your Apple Watch isn't necessary for what I'm gonna be teaching you today. With that said, I'm gonna begin with a brief overview of how your calorie input and output influences your weight. Calories and body weight. Odds are, since you're using MyFitnessPal, you're probably tracking your calories in order to achieve a certain body weight goal. And today, let's say that goal is to lose weight. To lose a single pound, you need to be in a calorie deficit of 3,500 calories. This can be best achieved through a combination of eating and exercising in the appropriate amounts. All the foods you eat and drinks you consume make up your calorie input, whereas all your exercise, movements, and other bodily processes factor into your calorie output. So even without dedicated exercise, your body burns a lot of calories naturally. This is done through processes like your metabolism, sleep, the act of eating, and the little movements you make throughout the day, such as walking around your home. What's really cool about the Apple Watch is that it tracks a lot of these calories for you based on the biometric information you plug in, such as your height and weight, your heart rate, and your movements. That information combined with the food and drink calories you're tracking on MyFitnessPal make it really easy to determine if you're in a calorie deficit, so you know whether or not you're on track towards your weight loss goals. The opposite of a calorie deficit is a calorie surplus, and that's what occurs when you consume more calories than you burn, which is what will cause weight gain over time. Now let me show you how exactly you can calculate your calorie deficit or surplus and the tools you'll need. Google Spreadsheet. First things first, you're gonna need a place to input these caloric values. You could do it on your own Excel spreadsheet or you could do it by hand in a journal and figure out the math yourself. But I went ahead and made a Google Spreadsheet that you could use complete with formulas that will automatically add and subtract values. And you can access that for free in the link in my description. The sheet itself is called Calorie Deficit Tracker by Kev the Trainer and you'll actually need a Google account to access and edit the file on Google Drives. Basically, once you click the link to access the spreadsheet, it'll open up a copy of Calorie Deficit Tracker by Kev the Trainer. You'll see that on the left, I have the date, and I created enough fields to last 100 days. You could also edit that and change it to an actual day and date by typing in that information and dragging down so it populates the rest of the fields. To the right of that, I have a calorie input column, and that's where you'll add all the food and drink calories you consume for a given day. And to the right of that, I have a calorie output column, and those are gonna be the calories you burn in a given day. Next to that is the calorie deficit column, and I have a formula in place that will actually subtract your calorie input from your output. So as long as that number is a positive, then you're on the right track. If that number is a negative, however, then that means you're in a calorie surplus. So you're working counter to your weight loss goals since you're consuming more calories than you burn. I also set this up with conditional formatting. So if you're in a calorie deficit, it will appear green, and if you're in a calorie surplus, it will appear red. So if you're calculating your calorie deficit or surplus by hand, the formula is your calorie output minus your calorie input. And to the right of the calorie deficit column, I have fields for you to input your weight. Off to the side, I have a total calorie deficit field that automatically adds everything from the calorie deficit column. And below that, I have a function set up that will divide that number by 3,500. So you have an estimate of how many pounds you've lost. With that said, keep in mind that working with calories is all an estimation, and it's not a perfect science. But making a consistent effort to burn more calories than you consume will help you with your weight loss goals in the long run. So now that I've gone through all that, 
Let me show you where you're gonna find your calories on my fitness pal and on your Apple Watch. Just a disclaimer, something I wanna be clear about before we go any further is that the exact caloric values I'm gonna be sharing with you from the day that I tracked are not reflective of how big your calorie deficit needs to be in order to lose weight. This was simply a random day during the week I picked where I exercised pretty vigorously and ate a moderate number of calories, resulting in a larger than usual calorie deficit. So instead of focusing on the numbers, I want you to pay closer attention to the math and the concept of achieving a calorie deficit. Calorie input on MyFitnessPal. Finding the calorie input value you're gonna use from MyFitnessPal is super easy. Once you've inputted all your food for a given day, you're just gonna plug in the value you see here on the top, right above food. In my example, I consumed 1,692 calories, which is on par with the goal MyFitnessPal set for me. I would suggest adding all these caloric values onto the spreadsheet the day after, so you're not getting ahead of yourself in case you have an unplanned meal or a spontaneous workout. On the Google spreadsheet, go ahead and type in that caloric value from my fitness pal underneath calorie input. And here I'm typing in 1,692 calories. Now we can plug in the calorie output. Calorie output on Apple Watch. Finding your calorie output from an Apple Watch is a little trickier. Surprisingly, there's no way to see that value on the Apple Watch itself. So what we're gonna have to do is actually go to the fitness app on your iPhone. From there, you're gonna tap activity. Then make sure you're looking at the date you wanna track and right at the very bottom of your move goal, in a tiny font, is your total calories burned. And here it says I burned 3,550 calories total that day. If you were curious, I walked for over six miles, cycled for an hour, and did traditional strength training. And all those activities contributed to 1,623 move calories. To track our calorie deficit, however, I want to know the total calories I burned from everything that day, not just exercise. And that's what the tiny numbers here display. I think it's strange that this value is so small and hard to find, but that's just the way it is. On the Google spreadsheet, we're gonna type in that caloric value into the calorie output column. So I'm adding in 3,550 calories burned. Calorie deficit and surplus. And with these tools together, we've now figured out our calorie deficit. With 1,692 calories in and 3,550 calories out, we see that our calorie deficit for the day is 1,858 calories. And that's an estimate of almost half a pound of weight loss. Just to demonstrate if this trend continues for the next 20 days, and that's super unlikely. So theoretically, if I'm in a 1,858 calorie deficit for 20 days, I should lose around 10 pounds. But again, I wanna really stress that a calorie deficit this large isn't very typical. Most days when I try to be in a calorie deficit, I'm between 500 and 1,000 calories. And those numbers are easier to achieve consistently. It's also a number I'd recommend you to aim for that would yield one to two pounds of weight loss a week, which is pretty sustainable. And just to demonstrate what would happen if we were in a calorie surplus every day and I reverse the values, I would possibly gain 10 pounds in that amount of time. Realistically though, your spreadsheet might look something like this, where you're on track most of the time, but some days you consume more than you burn. But as long as you're consistent overall, you'll still be successful in the long run and be closer to your goals compared to where you were when you started. Important tips. So now that I've really hammered in the fact that burning more calories than you consume allows you to lose weight, I wanna stress the importance of not eating too little. You might think that if you eat significantly less calories, you can create a larger deficit and lose weight faster, but that is not how you should go about this process. Your body still needs a certain amount of calories in order to function properly. So I would suggest eating around the calories that my fitness palette assigns you when you plugged in your goal information at the time you set up your account because the app is pretty good about not setting the calorie values too low. Another tip I have for you is not obsessing about being in a calorie deficit every single day. It's good knowledge to have and can definitely influence your eating and exercise behaviors. Know that there will be some days where you're on top of it, but other days where you won't, and that's totally fine. In the spreadsheet example I gave that was full of calorie surpluses and deficits, you saw that overall, there was still progress compared to the starting point, and that's what counts. So just know that this is gonna be a journey that has its ups and downs, but it just takes time and consistency overall. Conclusion. In the next video in this series, I'm actually gonna show you what it looks like when I track my calories for a day, just to bring this concept to life. So if you're interested in watching that, I'll have a link right over here when it's ready. So I hope you got some value out of this video and you learned a lot. Enjoy tracking calories on your spreadsheet. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.